Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Akansha Parimu. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. India and Egypt decide to elevate ties to strategic partnership. Pakistani rupee falls after market maker group removes currency cap. And freezing weather claims over 100 lives in Afghanistan in two weeks. And now for all the details, India and Egypt on Wednesday decided to elevate their ties to the level of strategic partnership with Prime Minister Narendra Modi and visiting Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi going to expand ties in areas of defence and security, trade and counter-terror cooperation. The Egypt's leader will grace India's Republic Day celebrations on Thursday as the chief guest. Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi was received by his Indian counterpart Draupadi Murmu and Prime Minister Narendra Modi as he reached the forecourts of the presidential palace in New Delhi, where he was accorded a ceremonial guard of honour on Wednesday. El Sisi, who arrived in India on Tuesday for a three-day official visit, will grace India's Republic Day celebrations as the chief guest. Later on Wednesday, he held one-on-one -on -one meeting with Modi and wide-ranging delegation-level talks, during which the two sides decided to elevate their ties to the level of strategic partnership, vowing to expand ties in areas of defence and security, trade and counter-terror cooperation, among others. The two sides also inked five agreements providing for cooperation in areas of culture, IT, cyber security, youth matters and broadcasting. Modi said both sides have decided to take the bilateral trade to 12 billion US dollars in the next five years. We have that Egypt strategic partnership आर्थिक एवं वैज्ञानिक क्षेत्रों में और अधिक व्यापक सहयोग का लॉन्ग टर्म ढांचा विकसित करेंगे। In his remarks, the Egyptian president said there was a discussion on boosting connectivity between the two countries. Egypt wants to see more and more Indian tourists visiting his country, he said. On Wednesday, CC also paid a visit to the memorial of India's freedom struggle leader Mahatma Gandhi to pay homage. A military contingent from the Egyptian army will also participate in the Republic Day Parade on Thursday. CC previously visited India in 2015 to participate in the third India-Africa Forum Summit, followed by his state visit in 2016. Security measures were ramped up across India on Wednesday to thwart any untoward incidents a day ahead of the country's Republic Day. India got its independence from the British colonial rule in 1947 and became a republic on January 26, 1950, the day it enacted its constitution. Ahead of the annual Republic Day celebrations in India, security forces across the country have tightened their security to keep an intense watch to prevent any untoward incident. Police officials in Indian capital, New Delhi, which will host the Republic Day Parade, has deployed around 7,000 troops in the city. Quick response team, National Security Guard and anti-drone equipment have also been stationed along the parade route. Security checks were also conducted in Mathura city in northern Uttar Pradesh state on Wednesday, with police officials seen conducting route march. Presence of police has been increased in several key points of the city, a top official informed. देखिए विभिन्न स्थानों को चिन्हित करके वहां चेकिंग की जा रही है जिस पे भी संदिग्ध व्यक्ति वाहन इन सबों को रोककर इनकी चेकिंग की जा रही है 26 जनवरी है इस दृष्टिगत पुलिस की प्रेजेंस और ज्यादा बढ़ाई गई है हम लोगों द्वारा सभी जगहों पर इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स पर हाईवेज के किनारे रूट मार्च भी किया जा रहा है और यह देखा जा रहा है कि कोई ऐसा व्यक्ति संदिग्ध प्रकार का वहां रुका ना हो या किसी प्रकार का कुछ एक्टिविटी ना कर रहा हो Railway Protection Force was also seen using sniffer dogs to conduct security checks in platforms and trains in southern India as part of the vigil. 
Elaborate security arrangements were also witnessed in parts of Jammu and Kashmir, bordering Pakistan, where security personnel frisked vehicles and conducted regular patrols. India got its independence from British colonial rule on August 15, 1947 and became a republic on January 26, 1950 that marks the day of enactment of the constitution. Since then, India displays its cultural diversity and military power in grand parades in New Delhi and across the country. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif on Tuesday said he is willing to discuss all demands of global lender IMF to revive the stalled funding. Addressing an event in Islamabad, Sharif said he does not want any further delay in the ninth review of the IMF. With depleting forex reserves and rise in inflation, the South Asian nation is in dire need of external financing. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif on Tuesday said his country was willing to discuss all demands of the International Monetary Fund, IMF, to unlock its stalled funding. The remarks from Sharif came a day after Pakistan's central bank chief, Jamil Ahmed, told media about the technical level talks held between IMF and Pakistan's finance ministry. Addressing an event in capital Islamabad, Sharif said, I want to request the IMF and I had talked to the managing director of the IMF and we have informed that we want to complete the ninth review without any delay. The 1.1 billion funds from IMF, which were supposed to be dispersed by November 2022, have been stalled as the global lender has been deferring the ninth review and their approval since September 2022. Meanwhile, the IMF has requested additional information regarding the budget from Pakistan as parts of the ongoing negotiations, media reports suggest. With interest rates already at 17%, inflation hitting 24.5% in December and foreign reserves as low as 4.6 billion US dollars, barely enough to cover three weeks of imports, the South Asian nation is in dire need of external financing. Moving on, Pakistani rupee weakened by 1.2% in the open market on Wednesday after foreign exchange companies removed a cap on the exchange rate saying it caused artificial distortions for an economy in desperate need of international monetary fund help. The Pakistani rupee weakened by 1.2% in the open market on Wednesday after foreign exchange companies removed a cap on the exchange rate, saying it caused artificial distortions for an economy in desperate need of international monetary fund help. The rupee was bid at 240.60 to the US dollar and offered at 243 in early open market trade, the Exchange Companies Association of Pakistan said in a statement. Compared with the range of 237.75 to 240 at the close on Tuesday, so far the rupee has depreciated 11.23% against the dollar during the 2022-23 fiscal year, which ends on June 30. Stock market investors responded positively to the decision to remove the currency cap, with the Pakistan Stock Exchange benchmark index rising 1.77%. Battling the highest inflation in decades, the central bank has raised interest rates sharply, but the country has barely enough foreign exchange reserves to cover three weeks of imports and is struggling to meet its external financing obligations. Taliban authorities have said that heavy snowfall and freezing weather have claimed 104 lives, including of children and women, in Afghanistan over the past two weeks. Extreme cold weather and snowfall have swept through parts of Afghanistan since the first week of January, where the temperature fell down to minus 30 degrees Celsius in some areas. Taliban spokesman for the Ministry of Natural Disaster Management and Humanitarian Affairs said earlier this week that heavy snowfall and freezing weather have claimed 104 lives, including children and women in Afghanistan, over the past 15 days. 
Taliban authorities earlier this month said that at least 78 people have died in freezing conditions in eight of Afghanistan's 34 provinces, deepening a humanitarian crisis affecting millions of people. Extreme cold weather and snowfall have swept through parts of Afghanistan since the first week of January where the temperature fell down to minus 30 degrees Celsius in some areas. Even in the early part of winter, health workers had reported a sharp increase in the number of young children suffering from serious cases of pneumonia and other respiratory diseases, in parts due to worsening poverty that left people unable to properly heat their homes. The Taliban takeover in August 2021 has sent Afghanistan's economy into tailspin, driving millions into poverty and hunger. Many aid groups have partially suspended operations in recent weeks due to the Taliban ruling that women NGO workers could not work, leaving agencies unable to operate many programs in the conservative country. In news from Sri Lanka, the Central Bank of Sri Lanka held interest rates steady for a third straight time on Wednesday, saying the prevailing tight monetary stance is crucial to taming still high inflation and restoring economic stability. This comes as the island nation awaits a crucial IMF funding program, which hinges on financing assurances from creditors. Sri Lanka's central bank held interest rates steady for a third straight meeting on Wednesday as widely expected, saying the prevailing tight monetary stance is crucial to taming still high inflation and restoring economic stability in the crisis-hit nation. The standing lending facility rate was held steady at 15.50%, while the standing deposit facility rate was kept unchanged at 14.50%, remaining at their highest levels since August 2001. The board was of the view that the maintenance of the prevailing tight monetary policy stance is imperative to ensure the monetary conditions remain sufficiently tight to rein in inflationary pressures the Apex Bank said in a statement. This comes as policymakers are still grappling with challenges on several fronts, including a shortage of foreign currency, a collapse in the rupee, a steep recession and slowing global growth. The National Consumer Price Index, however, eased to 59.2% in December after a 65% rise in November data released this week showed. The island nation of 22 million people is trying to clinch a $2.9 billion IMF funding package which hinges on financing assurances from creditors. Neighboring India told the IMF last week that it strongly supports Sri Lanka's debt restructuring plan. Colombo now awaits endorsement from China and Japan, the other bilateral creditors. Marrying off pet dogs have become a new and popular trend among pet owners in India. In one such incident, a one-year-old male dog Rio was married off to a nine-month-old female dog Ria in India's Navi Mumbai area on Tuesday. Take a look. Many pet owners in India have started a bizarre trend of marrying off their dogs. In one such incident, a one-year-old male dog Rio got hitched to a nine-month-old female dog Ria in Western India's Navi Mumbai on Tuesday with rituals of a traditional Indian wedding. Neighbours and relatives attended the ceremony. Deepa Bhatia, Rio's owner, said after seeing their love, we decided to mate them. But before that, we thought why not marry them first. The pet owner said they consulted a doctor before the wedding who said they were physically fit for mating. Proper way में करवानी है बारात आएगी शादी में मंडप होगी पंडित आएगा साथ फेरे लेगा पूजा पाठ कराएगा तो ये आइडिया उसी की थी A proper doli ceremony was also conducted to send off Ria the female dog in the similar way an Indian bride is sent off to her in-laws house by her family in a palanquin Well that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com/SouthAsianewsline. 
and follow us on Twitter at SHA Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.